This video is sponsored by PCBWay. So I got inspired by this thing called Brick. And while I love the idea, I don't wanna pay 50 bucks or more just to get off my phone. So I decided to make one for myself for free. So this thing is for myself and for everyone out there with the same problems, the goal is that you can really easily make this yourself. Let me show you how I did it. The first important thing here is having an app that allows you to block apps and stuff like that. And it had to be free. So since I've been using the app ScreenZen for a while now, that was the obvious choice. And it's honestly great for even more stuff than what we're doing today. In the app, you can do all sorts of cool stuff. You can block apps, you can have a timeout before you open it, you can relock it after certain time of using it. So not just overall time, but a lot more granular function, which can really help. So this app by itself is really cool, but it's mostly time-based rules. And I wanted something a little bit more physical, where I don't just have to press a button and then wait a couple seconds, but where I have to physically get up and then go somewhere to kind of unlock my phone and be able to use it then. But where I can still use it for productive stuff, like calls or messaging, when I don't want to do that other stuff. And since the original brick is basically just a fancy NFC tag, that was the obvious starting point. You can buy 10 of these little NFC chips for like seven to 10 bucks. So I guess technically it's not free, but you know, it's really, really cheap. So the plan now is to have something that when our phone discovers this NFC tag, it will trigger their screens on app and lock down our phone. To make this possible, I'm using iOS automations through the Shortcuts app. Basically, you set the NFC tag as the trigger and then let that trigger a separate shortcut. And the shortcut is just for screens and to start a block session. And that's pretty much our first prototype. So let's try it out. All right, sometimes these little NFC tags are just a little bit tricky. Cool, so that's success for our first prototype. Now let's make it a little bit better and nicer. The first thing I wanna do is, is improve the shortcut because right now it can only turn the block session on but not off and that would be kind of annoying. But with the help of my trusty friends Reddit and ChatGPT, I made it so you get a drop down and can choose whether you want to turn it on or off. A toggle would be really great, but currently that's not really possible. If you're interested in downloading the Siri shortcut, I'll put it in the description down below so you can just get it there easily. Just make sure to like the video and maybe subscribe to say thank you. And the second thing I wanna do is make this ugly ass NFC chip a little bit more presentable. To make the case for this build, you'll need a 3D printer. Or alternatively, you can use today's sponsor, PCBWay. So if you're just getting into making and don't even have a 3D printer yet, or you're a lot further down the line and wanna use advanced manufacturing methods, then PCBWay are the people for you. I've had stuff metal 3D printed or even CNC machine and all sorts of other stuff that I could have never machined or made myself. So if you have a project but not the machinery to make it, check out PCBWay and their website. They have a great calculator that'll tell you how much it costs, how long it's gonna take to make and all of that. The links in the description, definitely do check them out. Right now I'm designing a little puck that's gonna look good and also have a magnet. I have a design now, so let's print it. Here are the first prints, so let's assemble it. I've also ordered some special versions that I could make myself here on PCB Way, and we'll check those out once they get here. So the step is actually really easy. You just kind of grab the bottom part, and then you put your NFC tag right on there. Once you have that down, you just kind of plop it in here, and it should just go in. And lastly, you have this little hole for a magnet just so you can stick it on your fridge or whatever. And that should just basically friction fit in there. Maybe I'll adjust the fit for that a little bit just so you can do it with your hands, but this works. And there you go, this is the finished D cubed. So now that this is working, I can just put it here, pretty far away from my desk. Whenever I wanna unlock my apps, I need to get all the way up and then walk over here where I quickly tap it, say unblock, and boom, bang, boom, I'm in. So the self-made version has a bunch of pros and cons. Obviously, with custom app development, you can do some more cool stuff, and maybe you can just lock it down even harder. 
But what I like about this is that it's all done over shortcuts. So you can also just trigger it by arriving to work. You can automatically have it locked down your apps, which I think can be really cool. Also, of course, this is pretty much free and you can make however many of these you want. So it's been a couple days of using the device and honestly, I've been loving it so far. One thing that I did change, I made another shortcut that now can toggle on and off the thing. It's kind of bound towards your iPhone's focus state. So that's kind of a second opinion since I'm not sure how well this translates throughout all the different languages. It might be a little more involved to get it working, but I think it's a really cool thing. So there'll just be two versions of this and you can just use whichever yeah, makes the most sense to you. So here's a new demonstration of the little shortcut. Once you tap it, it will check if you're in reduced interruptions and if not, it's going to put you right there and also lock your apps. And this is, and then you're good and then again it'll check and if you're in reduced interruptions, it'll turn that off and unlock your apps, which is really nice. However, some of you might have already seen the problem in the demonstration just before. As soon as you tap your phone against this, this just like turns whichever way. And although that functionally isn't a problem, it just looks really bad. So I just want to give this some like anti-slip so it just stays perfectly straight and just keeps looking good. With these projects, it's always interesting that the little details in the end take up a lot of time. So just like getting the thing to function usually works fairly quickly and then just like getting those little details to be perfect actually takes a long long time in the end. That being said my plan is to make some TPU inlays that'll make this whole thing non-slip and just stay where it is. So I'll design and print that now. So after some design changes, this now has some TPU rubber feet. And when I now just put it there, it sticks a lot better. You can still move it, but usually when you just tap it with your phone, it stays put. So I think that's a win in my books and I'll just leave it here. I want to say though, these feet are kind of optional. You know, they're nice to have, but you don't have to do this. In addition to my first version, which was split in two, so you could first print the outer case, put the NFC tag in and then put that last part in, I have now also made a version that's all in one. So you basically print it up, then you have a pause in there where you can just put the NFC tag in and then print the rest. So it's all in one piece. There's nothing that can, I don't know, rattle, fall out. But, you know, I think it has its ups and downs because on one side, it's just like one piece, which I really like. But on the other hand, you can never take the NFC chip out really, at least not with, without destroying the whole case. And also, if you want to do something like PCB way, where you have someone else manufacture it, and then you put your NFC tag in, that won't be possible. So I'll definitely be uploading both of these versions and you just pick whichever one you think is best for you. I think each one has its place. Speaking of PCB way, my prints have finally arrived and I'm super excited to check these out. Let's see what we got here. Oh wow, this one I'm really excited about. This one is a fully aluminum 3D printed version. Honestly, there's a good chance that the NFC tag won't go through this, but I had to try. Also, I wanted to try to get a resin 3D printed version because the detail and text and everything is much sharper and I really like the way this came out. I'm actually really looking forward to see if this one works at all, but we'll test it out. We will just pop in one of these, grab this. Here we go. This is the aluminum one and let's see if this scans. So it turns out this does not scan. This isn't PCBUA's fault though. It's just that NFC doesn't go through anything metal or conductive really. So it was fairly obvious that this wasn't gonna go through aluminum. I still wanted to try though, because holy moly, does this look nice. And I really wanted it to work. All right, but let's move on to the resin printed version. And here we go. I just wish I had a white NFC tag. All right, now I'm gonna to try to scan this. And to no one's surprise, this one worked instantly. Still kind of bummed out that the aluminum version didn't work, but hey, it was still really cool to have that print and just feel it, see what's possible. And if you need anything produced, check out PCBWay. 
links in the description or in the comment. One little pro tip that I wanted to leave you with in terms of the configuration, if you're really addicted to your phone, then there's two things that you should also do because in Screens In, you could just add the Shortcuts app and also the Screens In app itself to the blocked apps. So this way you can't just manually wiggle out of what you just created and it's just a little bit more secure. All in all, I've been using the D3 for a couple days now and I can already see that it's making a difference in my screen time. I think it's just like gives you that little bit of extra friction where you don't just pull out your phone and just mindlessly go browsing because you have to physically get up. And to me, that's a way bigger barrier than just waiting a couple seconds or anything. So for me, it's really been working and I hope you do try this out. If you want to try it out, all the links are in the description down below for you to make this and buy the supplies that you might need. If you have any ideas how to improve this product or any other thoughts, how it improved your life, let me know in the comments down below. I really love hearing from you people. And other than that, check out this video on how I go about 3D designing and 3D printing new things that I can think of and just the whole design process behind it. I think that's really interesting and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.